other paper I sent you, my True Colors, the True Colors paper. Yes, I love that paper. I think that's the one that I came across on yeah. on Twitter. I was like, this is so fascinating because you're talking about, you know, actual ways that we can change, you know, make changes yeah. and have a very real effect. So this paper is titled True Colors, Grayscale Settings, Reduce Screen Time in College Students. What led you to, to having this idea? So I'm going to first start off by saying that I, the title of the song was named was named after the song by Kesha and Zed, True Colors. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, so a big thing here at UND is our hockey program. We have one of the best hockey programs in the country. Like, like everyone goes to the games. It's a big deal. You know, students wait in line and negative 20 degree weather for multiple hours it's wow it's a big that deal that sounds like ohio um, state with our football yeah um thankfully for me my office is like five minutes away so i normally wait until they open the doors mm -hmm. and then i just kind of go right in there but um Perfect. so they always played these songs you know like these entrance songs and they kept on playing this song mm -hmm. it was a true color song and i had no idea who sang it i had no idea for like 12 games into the season like i didn't know until probably like february <laughs> So once I finally learned, I'm like, wow. all right, this is a, all right, this is a jam. So I started listening yeah. to it a lot, and uh, um, I just I kind of named it after that. But so I, how I came across this idea was again, like you mentioned, John. There's a lot of research that's being done, that's basically saying, hey, these things are related. That's cool. But I feel mm -hmm. like research needs to go beyond identifying these constructs. We need to actually, you know, do some something viable that can actually help people. And um, so I learned about this grayscale challenge thing online somewhere about how it makes people's phones less appealing. So then I was like, well, well, you know what? Let's let's try it out. And I'm like, oh, this is like a right. whole world, you know? You know uh, so I had my phone in grayscale and um, definitely. Is this something I, that people are able to try out on oh, yeah. their own? Is this a setting built into? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's actually within the accommodations feature, I believe. The fun thing about doing research with these technology technological concepts is when Apple makes new changes to, the, to their iOS and completely throws oh, right. a lot of your protocols off. I think it's under accommodation. Is it accessibility? Yeah, accessibility. Yeah, accessibility displays and text size, color filters, and if you just put the color filters right here on. Oh my God, grayscale! This is bizarre. So for for yeah. our listeners uh, watching or, or listening at home, if you go to if you're using an iPhone, I'm not sure what the Android. Do you know if there's an Android version of this there as well? There is an Android um, version. I'm there gonna is. Give I believe there is. I believe you can do it on Android. We're gonna, we're gonna get that in two seconds, but let's do the iPhone one first. So you go into your settings in the iPhone. You go to accessibility. Um, and then you click on uh, display and text size, right? Accessibility, display and text size, go to color filters to hit on. And then you have options for different color filters and grayscale is the top one. And boom, you have your phone in a grayscale. I'm going to try this for the rest of the day because this is so interesting. Do you have the Android version yet? I am looking for it. Is there an accessibility under Android? Sorry, we're going to get back to your, your paper in a second. We just want to make sure people are able to follow along with this because I think this is so interesting. No results found. Not coming up. Well, so I'm we're gonna, gonna have to we're gonna have to figure that out at another time. But um, yeah. So so you had this idea to actually do research based on mm -hmm. what happens when people change their 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 phone yep. colors. Yeah, absolutely. So tell and, us how that worked. So what we did was we recruited participants from the University of North Dakota. We had them do some baseline measures. So we, you know, again when we were looking at anxiety and depression, we looked at their screen time, and then we. Um, randomly put them in one or two conditions. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. either they ha had their phone in black and white, or they didn't. And uh, once you didn't, right. they had. So really you had a control easy. group. Yeah, yeah, we had a control group to compare them to, and uh, the people who got. Which is so interesting because because one of the one of the fears is that people are going to change their their screen use regardless as soon as you put them into a study, right? So you mm -hmm. have the control group to find out, you yep. know, just. How did people respond without any changes to their phone, but they're in the study as well, versus how do people respond in the study with these changes? Yep. Awesome. So, so we got all that information. Uh, the people who got the control group, they kind of were you know, quite lucky. They didn't have to do anything different for the, that eight right. days. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was it was between eight to 10 days for the first study. We did a replication of the study as well. But anyways, with the first study, okay. we, uh, they would come back, they would do the same measures, and then we would leave them alone in the room and we'd have them do a post-survey, basically being like, hey, did you actually keep your phone in grayscale? Mm -hmm. if, okay. 
and if they said no, then we asked them why. You know, what stopped you from having your phone in grayscale? And then we um, we excluded those participants from data analysis. What kind of answers did you get? I'm very curious about that. Oh, uh, it was it was a hodgepodge. A lot of a lot of really interesting <laughs> stuff. Um, so we had a, a batch of participants who did the study during Greek life recruitment. So oh, uh, oh no, I would have <laughs> stuff about how how they how they stopped the study because they had to edit some pictures, and that was one of the really common uh-huh. things where people needed to edit their pictures and they couldn't tell you know what it looked like. Um, I would say the vast majority of people who did switch their phones, it was for reasons like that, or it was stuff kind of like, oh, I was How? shopping online um, and, you know, I couldn't see what stuff looked like. And it really kind of opened my eyes to the sense that a lot of people are using their phones for like everything. For online shopping, I normally do that on, on you know, on my computer, you know, mm-hmm. but a lot of people like, you know, they do everything on their phone. And yeah. And that's part of the reason why when I see smartphone addiction scale items about how, you know, if my phone broke, I would get a new one immediately. Well, yeah, I mean, right. We do everything. On we them. do everything on our phone. Of course, we're going to get a new right. one. It's like if you're commuting an hour every day and your car breaks, you're going to get a new one immediately. You know what I mean? That's yeah. not because you're addicted to your car. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think part of the thing is some of the researchers making these scales, they, they themselves don't really have a smartphone. You know, they don't. Oh my God. Wow. You gotta be kidding me. How, that, how are you alive in like <laughs> the, like, that reminds me of Congress. 20, 2010. That's like Congress doing healthcare legislation, but none of them understand any of the issues or, or have ever worried about healthcare because they've always had healthcare Perfect their entire healthcare. lives in Congress. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so crazy. So, so that's why it's so important to have people like you coming in from the younger generation who actually is living this and is surrounded by people living this and actually have the perspective of of what types of questions we need to ask and and what do these questions mean? Because somebody who's been doing research in psychology for 30 years and mm-hmm. has never used a cell phone because, you know, whatever, they're or in their ivory phone, tower. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. they, they're, they're, they have no frame of reference to understand this stuff. That's so interesting. So yeah, interesting. And I was actually on Twitter uh, the other day and um, one of the, one of the, Premier fear of missing out researchers, Andrew Shablinsky, I think I said his last name right. He tweeted something to the extent, if every behavior is, can become an addiction, then nothing is. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Oh my God, um, I'm trying to take notes on my phone right now and it's in grayscale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> freaking you out already? <laughs> it's yeah, hard. No, yeah. Like, um, oh yeah with, and then I guess with the main findings of that, of that study is that we found that participants on average, they use their phones, I think something around almost 40 less minutes each day. Wow. And, just having it on grayscale. Yeah, just by having it on grayscale. But again, the important thing wow. about, so originally that was kind of like the big finding that we had. We were like, yeah, like, all right. Like, that's probably, like, I would say as, as a graduate student, as a researcher, like, I'm just living the dream. Mm-hmm. Like, I just love every part of the process. But especially at the very end, when I you click it. enter and it runs your data and you have, like, you know, good results you're just like oh my gosh like let's go like that's so good um, that's such a great feeling yeah especially because it takes so long sometimes to collect this data so uh, we collected right. all of that all that data in one semester but then the replication study took three semesters and then wow but one of the important things with the original study that we found is that th- those screen time decreased by 40 minutes a day on average Anxiety and depression severity did not. Oh, whoa. What does that tell you? That tells me that it's important to really look at specific features of smartphone use. Because again, Mm. if you're just looking at total screen time, you know, who's to say, you know, they might not be on Facebook for 10 hours a day on their phone anymore, but they might still be on 10 hours a day on their computer, you know? Right. Interesting. So again, it kind of goes in that methodological battle that we have. But however, in our replication study, which I've completed it, I'm done writing it. I'm just waiting to finish my comprehensive exams to submit the paper because I just want to wait until a better day, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of off. In that study, we did find that anxiety did go down significantly. Okay. Oh. Um, which again, we had conflicting findings there. So we need future research needs to kind of look at that. But in addition, we used a measure of problematic smartphone use, and we saw that that went that was 
significantly different for those in grayscale. So huh. different in what way? Well, in our first study, we didn't include that measure of problematic smartphone okay. use. But in the second measure, we found that individuals who were in the grayscale condition, they scored significantly less in problematic smartphone use after a week of having their phone in grayscale. So uh. the main finding of this is that, so again, problematic smartphone use, the social dilemma makes a lot of statements. Some of them are, are well, some of them are not very well. But one of the things that they are very mm -hmm. accurate about is that these devices are, are made to retain and obtain our attention. And, right. Mm -hmm. But the idea with the grayscale studies is that we find that when you put your phone in grayscale, you reduce the salience of these desires to come back for more. Kind of right. Mm -hmm. So if uh, one of the things, so I actually occasionally do put my phone in grayscale anytime I have a big paper or something you know, that I just have to get done. I don't can't afford mm -hmm. for distractions. That's awesome. So I wonder if, if I wonder if we're going to see more, you know, there's a ton of people kind of study. I don't want to say study is the right word that write about, <laughs> you know, productivity hacks and that kind of thing, how to like make yourself more productive. And, and yeah. I, I bet we're going to start seeing more and more people recommending that like, Hey, when you really need to focus, because people have written apps for like, you know, Chrome browser or whatever that blocks your social media for X number of, of hours or whatever. I, I bet this is going to be another recommendation that you're going to see people making. It's like when you need to be really focusing, don't just put your phone in airplane mode, put it on grayscale as well and, and you know, or turn it off and put it away even better. But that's not always an option. One question I have about the grayscale uh, setting, and this might require future research, is the first thing that I noticed putting my phone on grayscale is that immediately things become unrecognizable because when you use your phone every day, like let's say I go on my phone, I want to find Twitter. It's bing, bang, boom. I'm on Twitter. I'm doing what I need to do. As soon as I put my phone into grayscale, I'm like dis disoriented a little bit. Mm -hmm. There becomes like a, a, a bigger burden for me every time I open my phone to figure out what I'm trying to do. And I think that that burden slows me down and makes me less adept at using the phone and makes it maybe less of a reward mm -hmm. if we're seeking out a quick dopamine fix or whatever, mm -hmm. you don't get it as quickly and as easily. And that makes you less likely to seek it out, which could, could be an explanation for why people are therefore then using their phones less on grayscale setting. What I wonder is, would your brain eventually adapt to the grayscale setting if you used it for long enough? And would you see those numbers sort of normalize again? And it, it, it would, I guess you'd have to study that over a longer period of time. I'm, I'm curious about that. What do you, do you yeah, have any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that, that I, we address kind of towards the end of the paper is that future research needs to see how effective this is and as a long-term solution. Um, I guess, ideally for me, I feel like I don't need to have my phone in grayscale for that long of a period of time. It's more of like, you know, finals week, you know, something like very like maybe a little bit beyond a week, but it would be interesting to see that. Um, right. Because, mm -hmm. because again, like these bright colors are psychologically appealing to look at. And they're and, designed specifically. I mean, they're, they're running, yeah. these companies are running tests over and over again yeah. to figure out what is the exact best layout color design? What does the button need to look like? How do we reward you when you click this button? What shows up on the screen? All of that is being tested, you know, to infinity to find out exactly, you know, what is the most effective uh, way to get people to continue using the apps. And so it's interesting to think about what can we do as users to kind of like, regain some control over how we're being manipulated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's almost like if you're in a casino, if you had some control in the casino about how the casino is manipulating you into continue playing that slot machine, obviously they're never going to allow that in a casino, but it mm -hmm. seems like the smartphone manufacturers actually do have some interest in giving users some control back over these kinds of things. Thanks for checking out this clip from our show. To watch more clips or full episodes, click on our profile below. If you want to stay up to date on all of our new episodes and videos, click subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future guests or topics that you would like to see us cover on the show, leave us a message in the comments or connect with us on any of our social media channels at Funtime Program or on our website at FuntimeProgram.com. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.